my name is Larissa Vasquez. I am Dominican. I was born there. And then I came to the U.S. when I was about nine years old. And now here I live in Inwood, in Washington Heights. So it's a mostly Dominican neighborhood. You were at a store and you were picking out a doll? Yes. So it was actually my first Christmas in the U.S. And my mom and my dad, they took us, me and my two smaller sisters, to the store and they were like, you know, you can pick whatever you want. Santa's gonna get you whatever you want. Just go and let us know what you want. So of course, we go around the store and there was this doll that was like really famous at the time. And her name was Starla. So she had a mic and you could like sing into the mic and she would sing with you. So it's like, you have like a little duet, you know? So I go to the store and I pick the black doll, like the black Starla doll. And I'm like, this is the one I want. So my mom looks at the doll and she's like, this is the one that you want? You don't want this one? And like she pulls like the white version of the doll. And I'm like, no, I don't want that doll. I want this doll. So of course we get into a back and forth. My sisters are next to me. Like one of my sisters, she's like, you know, a little bit darker than me. And she's like, you don't want that doll. Like that one is ugly. Take the other doll. I'm like, this the is the one. one that I want. Yeah, she want, like everyone was convinced that I wanted the white doll, but that is not the doll that I wanted. No, no. So finally, I just sit there and I'm like literally about to cry. And I remember the moment that I'm like, I don't want this doll. This is the one I want. You don't want to get it for me. Finally, my dad, who is like, you know, the darker skin <laughs> of the duo, my mom and my father, he's like, get her the doll. This is the doll that she wants. Get her the doll. So my mom visibly upset gets me the doll and I'm the happiest person in the world. I play with the doll all the time and little by little my mom kept putting the doll in the closet even after I got it. So I would like have to like take it out to like play with it and I guess now when I'm older it's kind of like oh my god why does she have this doll? I don't even want to see it. Let me put it away. But at the time to me like you know I was like eight or nine I don't remember exactly and to me it was just like this is all I wanted this is a doll that I think is prettier than the other doll this is the one I want to play with even though my mom I'm sure she did everything in her power to like not have to play with the doll like putting it in the closet and <laughs> be having to find the doll <laughs> all the time. why why did you want that doll I don't really remember cuz you're young when you're little I feel like when you're young you don't really like see color even though, like, especially being Dominican, um, you're raised with just, like, a color complex, you know? Like, oh, you know, you're so pretty. Like, why do you want something darker? You know, like, light is pretty, dark is not. But at the time, I honestly think I thought, this is a prettier doll. And it could be, like, subconsciously, it's like, half of my family is darker, so I didn't see a problem with it. But I just... I think I just, that's the doll that I wanted. And everyone was saying no, and the more people tell you no, the more that you want that doll. <laughs> that's really powerful because um, it, it's really telling. How, can you describe um, your, your family's outlook on color? Because obviously your mother was opposed to it. Your father saw that you were unhappy with it. Does he have a stance similar to your mother's? I just, I mean, my mom and my dad, they divorced when I was like 13, but I think that my dad is probably like the more progressive one, maybe because he's darker and I actually have never asked him about just like color complex, which I actually should because he would probably tell me. Between like my, my parents and like the outlook that they have, my mom has always like tried not to be like overtly like I don't like this I don't like that but everyone in my family like is definitely like affected by the color thing like I was telling you earlier my boyfriend is black and my mom she loves whoever I love like as long as they treat me well and I am the happiest person ever she's fine with it but I have an aunt that actually made a really really racist comment and me and my boyfriend have only been together two years so this is like 2009 she's like you know Larissa, she's so pretty. Why is she with him? Oh my God, we're going to have to plant a banana tree because when they have children, so all those little monkeys can play in the backyard. 
of course my mom gets irate <laughs> and basically just like tells my aunt like you know tells her off and she didn't tell me about this comment actually till like a few months ago because she knew I would just go off but it's like very prevalent like that whole colorism and like you're so pretty because you're light or be dark is not pretty you know or you can be dark and pretty as long as you have like you know um, the comp like white features you know your nose is not as round your hair you have good hair you're you know so I definitely like see that in my family like even now so my question is you're with the whole doll thing and the color complex why did your mother end up with your father if he's so much darker than you her. know why because in the Dominican Republic it's not you're dark you're black is you're a little bit darker so you're Indio you're Indio claro so you're light Indian you're Indio oscuro so you're dark Indian so my dad fell in that Indio like vague category you know so she ended up with him but I think that to her wasn't like oh he's black even though here in the U.S. it's very different. Here in the U.S. someone's a little bit dark, oh, they're black. You know, even when I went to college and it was an old white school and I tell them I'm Dominican, they don't know what that is. They're like, black, Mexican? What's Dominican? You know? So I think with her, like, they ended up together obviously because they loved each other, but also because she, I don't think that she consciously considered him, like, dark or black. So then how did those views change once they got to the U.S.? I don't think that they did. I think that because they ended up in Washington Heights, which is like little Dominican Republic, where it's really a microcosm of the Dominican Republic. So American values and like the way America sees things, I feel like it doesn't reach them. You go to a bodega, everyone speaks Spanish. Like they, whatever they learn the Dominican Republic is just transported here to the US. I know from just like, growing up there and going back there and having like my family members there it's like you know it's like oh Haitians they're black we're Dominican we're not and they could be the exact same skin tone the exact same complexion but it's different because I'm Dominican I'm not Haitian so you come here it's like I'm Dominican I'm not black you know it's like you have those lines um, to like divide yourself to like make yourself either better than or less than and it's very funny because a lot of my black friends are like well you know Dominicans they will just you know say they're not black they're not this they're not that they're like these lines and when you're stuck in a community that like supports those values and you don't step outside of it how can you know like how can you know that you're not just Dominican, you are black and Dominican, you know? And it's it's like when we had the census in 2010 and it said Hispanic is not a race. You need to pick black or white. And I was very conflicted because I'm like, what do I write? Do I write black or white? And my roommate from college, she's Dominican, but she's like, you know, the first slaves who went to the Dominican Republic, so you know you're not white. You cannot write that because she's all like, you know, <laughs> stay true to your roots. And I'm like, no, I'm really conflicted. Like, my mom would be considered white, my dad would be considered black, and I don't know. And when I ask other people, like even people who are darker than me that don't look like me, they wrote white on it. And I'm like, it just feels wrong to write that. <laughs> so of course I just like wrote it multiracial. Because <laughs> I'm like, what do I write? Which is very accurate. <laughs> it's as recent as like Trujillo, which is like, you know, like maybe like 60 years ago. It's that recent where like these color lines come in and like you don't know your roots and you don't know like what to claim and where to come from and it really starts with the fact that like the media shows us that darker is ugly and lighter is better and this is better than that and then all of a sudden everyone tries to claim something else so you, you want to reach down to like your Taino blood even though you may not have any because most of the Dominican Republic started like with slaves you know and like with like the Spaniards like coming in like yeah like we all have 
a little bit of like that Spaniard blood, but you cannot deny your African roots. You look around the people and you see their faces and you just, you cannot deny it, but they do. They do not see it because they're not taught. And like, you know, I'm very privileged because I got to come to the U.S. and I got to like study like Latino countries and I got to study, um, you know, African American roots and I got to study, you know, West Indian. So like, I'm very privileged that I get to see all the sides and I get to like actually know like where like what makes up my country and like what blood do I have in me you know and a lot of people there they don't get to do that and they come here and it's just like a microcosm of the Dominican Republic and they still don't get it taught and they don't like it like I have friends that I work with who are like grew up in Washington Heights, have not left Washington Heights. All they know is Dominican Republic, Washington Heights. So they don't know like that you have a lot in common with like somebody who is African American or West Indian. Um, and they don't know it because it's just whatever they got taught over there gets brought over here. You know? Um, I had a class in college, a race class where they separated the class and they were like, all right, separate yourselves. Like, find things that you have in common, separate yourself. So, like, all the Jewish kids all went together. All the black kids all went together. And then all the, like, Latino kids all went together. And then the teacher asked me, he's like, Larissa, why are you in that group? And I'm like, because we all speak Spanish. And he's like, but in your culture, do you guys really have, like, a lot of things in common? And I have more in common with people who are West Indian because the same fruits grow like in the same islands and like the same kind of like old school like traditions you have them. And like I have more in common with my Trinidadian friend than I have with like my Mexican friend, you know? And you know, it's like language like brings us together. The same way that like we make up these barriers, it's the same barriers that come up with like race and like. You know, denying like your African roots.